What are some interesting creepy topics to look into? Story 1. The universe is honestly the most creepy topic there is. We have no idea why it exists, what lies beyond it, what will happen to it in the future, and so on. It is filled with mysteries beyond our comprehension. We live on a time machine of sorts, viewing the stars and galaxies as they looked hundreds, thousands, and billions of years ago. An example is the red giant star Betelgeuse in the upper right of the Orion constellation. It has an orangish hue. As a red giant, it is nearing its end of life. Astronomers have noted that it periodically dimmed over the past decade and could go supernova at any time. In the astronomic time scale, any time means it could be tomorrow or still thousands of years. Betelgeuse is 642 light years from Earth. If we were to witness its supernova tonight, it means that it actually exploded in the year 1381. Story 2. Lost Cultures and Ancient Civilizations It's crazy how much human history is really lost to time, and how many different experiences and forms human life must have taken on. It hasn't been very long since our ancestors were trying to earn a living by hunting and gathering while trying not to be eaten by other animals or dying from diseases or infections. This current life of going to school and having a job is really just a recent format for life. We have the luxury of knowing what exists up above and down below, where just 500 years ago it was anyone's guess. Sure, a few people had a rough idea in some more populated areas, but the knowledge didn't spread very fast and could quickly be changed or hidden. Story 3. If you're into declassified, formerly, top secret documents and such, check out the CIA's Project Stargate. There's a guy on YouTube called Mr. Mythos who has two excellent videos about it, and he cites all of his sources, most of which are directly from the program itself. Essentially, the CIA used psychic spies throughout the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. These spies were able to perform a process called remote viewing, in which they were able to see locations that they had zero prior knowledge of. Secret Soviet laboratories, Chinese chemical weapons manufacturing plants, a bunch of crazy crap like that. While remote viewing, they were able to discern a lot of information about these places with relative accuracy, such as personnel, furniture, missile launch codes, and things of that nature. The program was officially deactivated in 2005, although it is highly speculated that the program is still in use today, just under a different alias. Story 4. History is full of creepy and spooky tales. Also, there are a lot of eerily similar instances or situations between different cultures and times. I find most of it more fascinating but creepy, but going off my friends, they should be creepy. A few fun topics to look into. 1. Secret clubs, societies, especially those closely associated with the elite and Ivy League colleges. Way stranger than Greek life. 2. More disturbing than creepy, but the triangle shirt waist factory fire. It spurred modern ideas of unions and workplace safety. Some of the eyewitness accounts also have callings to other tragedies like 9-11, or the French charity Bazaar Fire of 1885. Things like victims choosing to jump to their deaths or first responders not being at all prepared for the utter destruction. 3. I have a personal love for royal tragedy, but I think most know at least the basics of Tsar Nicholas II and Anastasia and the whole assassination. But my gosh, there is a reason why Rasputin is still a ghost story. Manipulative, used religion to his own ends, survived so many things that should have killed a normal person, etc. 4. A few perhaps less well-known serial killers, Amelia Dyer, Delphine LaLaurie, she is particularly awful, you know you're a monster when pre-Civil War South thought you were the devil, Dean Corll, Nicholas Dament, John Lynch, Diogo Alves, Maria Swanenberg, Belle Gunness. Story 5. One small rabbit hole to go down is the entire town of Skidmore, Missouri. So many interesting and strange crimes and people. A child vanished entirely, and a woman cut the baby out of another woman, not to mention the other murders. 
the most known one was of the town bully murder. So many witnesses, yet they all deny it. The most insane thing is that I'm related to one of the witnesses. He was my great uncle, a great man. He had, I think, six heart attacks and four strokes before finally leaving. The town sheriff at the time of that murder, he saw it as well, was a pallbearer at my uncle's funeral. The town's population was 300. So many murders, and only 300 residents. Given the amount of mining and lead released into the environment in Missouri, in past generations, it's somewhat better now. This does not surprise me. Many of the towns in rural Missouri still refuse lead remediation on their properties because they don't want to hurt the reputation of the company that employs most of the town, even if the current company had nothing to do with the original lead pollution. Lead poisoning leads to lower intelligence and heightened violence. Story 6. America's Abandoned Tunnels Pre-World War II Dating Back to the 1920s These tunnels were part of projects that were never completed or cancelled when war started. The tunnels go unsupervised, so anything could happen down there, like cults, murder, drug dealing, and a load of other stuff. These tunnels vary in depth and size for purposes like railway, sewer, and such. Now they sit decaying in deep dark places. Another topic is the supernatural and abandoned locations in forests. Camping sites have been known to have supernatural or downright creepy things happen, whether it is screaming, crying, or sounds that are not human or animal. Abandoned locations like shacks, houses, or any man-made things that are not in use are always strange and concerning. They are just there, decaying, no sign of civilization in the forest, except for that place. Who built the structure? Why is it there? I get houses that could be in a forest, but really deep and worse, abandoned. Very odd and scary, because anything could happen at these locations and still go unnoticed, like the tunnels I was talking about. These might be the topics that could spark interest for you. Story 7. Here are a few that might intrigue you. Number stations. These shortwave radio stations transmit seemingly random sequences of numbers or letters, often in a synthesized voice. They're believed to be a method of communication for spies, but the true nature of most of these transmissions remains a mystery. The Lead Masks Case. In 1966, two Brazilian electronic technicians were found dead wearing lead masks, typically used to protect against radiation. No clear cause of death was determined, and the case is full of strange details, like a notebook with cryptic instructions. Skinwalker Ranch, a property in Utah that's reportedly the site of numerous paranormal and UFO-related phenomena. The events reported range from UFO sightings to large animals with piercing red eyes. The Toynbee Tiles, mysterious messages embedded into the asphalt of streets in several major U.S. cities, and other locations around the world. The meaning and origin of these tiles are still largely unknown. The Green Children of Woolpit, a medieval legend of two children with green skin who suddenly appeared in the English village of Woolpit, speaking an unknown language. The Voynich Manuscript, a medieval document written in an unknown language or cipher. Despite numerous attempts by cryptographers and codebreakers, the Voynich Manuscript remains untranslated. Each of these topics has a deep rabbit hole to go down, filled with theories, debates, and unanswered questions. Enjoy the journey, but don't get too lost in the darkness. Story 8 Something that creeps me out is the idea of the uncanny valley effect. Obviously, the likelihood is that, at some primal part of our evolution, we needed to be able to tell the difference between our fellow Homo sapiens and the other types of primal humans at the time, like the Neanderthals. What creeps me out is the fact that it still exists and wasn't phased out in our evolution after the other human species died out. You'd think that we would have evolved past it in the absence of any human species other than Homo sapiens, purely out of lack of necessity. The fact that evolution and our brains still subconsciously feel 
that we need to be able to tell the difference between a human and something that isn't quite is kind of terrifying makes me wonder whether it could be possible that there's something out there that pretends to be human. Story 9. Space overall. We look at the stars, and yet, we have no clue what may be out there, watching us too. You could read about that time we sent a satellite thing into space, and it got some sort of response from who knows where. We got a response from something in space that could be another life form, or maybe just some random rare occurrence that doesn't mean anything. Sometimes I think about our galaxy and the idea that something alive may be doing something. There frees me out. Just the fear of the unknown and the knowledge that we are probably not alone, yet we don't see anything is creepy to me. Story 10. Anything involving Midwestern and Southern states, involving the prison systems and politics. In Georgia, LaShawn Thompson, who was a disabled person, was put into the worn-down area they used to hold the mentally unwell. Over the course of weeks, LaShawn was neglected, not being given enough water or food, losing over 30 pounds over the course of weeks. That's not even the worst part. LaShawn was quite literally eaten alive and completely conscious by bedbugs along with roaches. This happened this year, 2023. A disabled African-American man was left to rot and be eaten alive in a rural state. Mind you, this is the same state where a sheriff was recorded talking about lynching black people. Story 11. The early history of Christianity. It's not creepy on its face due to mysticism, etc., but rather how something viewed by contemporaries as a common cult could over time prove so insidious as to become the philosophical foundation and worldview for something like over half the living population today. Writers like Celsus, 2nd century CE, treat Christians like most of society, views Scientology and QAnon today. Now imagine, in a relatively short amount of time, Q and associated dogma replacing millennia of societal norms and becoming the primary locus through and by which society is organized. That's essentially what happened between the 2nd and 4th centuries CE. It's wild how things pan out over the long arc of the observable past and what we can learn from it. Story 12. Uncanny Valley. A genetic trait we have that makes humans weary of human-looking but not quite human enough things. Dolls, clowns, wax figures, even some deformities. It means we had a predator in our past that looked like us that was bad enough we came to fear for our lives for generations afterward. More than likely, one of the branches of the human evolutionary tree used to kill us for sport or food. Story 13. In my opinion, the concept of cannibalism is a strong one. Cannibalism isn't illegal by definition. Just killing and hacking body parts off other humans is illegal. But if you bring home an amputated limb and eat that, it isn't technically illegal. It's very fascinating when you go into it, as it only recently stopped being the norm around the 1900s or 1800s, if I remember correctly. Story 14, I took criminology in university, and I gotta say, go pick up a book about any big-time criminal, serial killer, mobster, etc., and see how their life was. There's one I read a long time ago called The Iceman, about a mob hitman, and how he was raised as a kid. It's a movie, too, with Michael Shannon. There's also a show on Netflix called I Am A Killer. I've only seen a few episodes, but it's crazy seeing how normalized they think they are, like they did nothing wrong. It's interesting looking at their backgrounds and comparing them to yours really makes you think about nature versus nurture stuff. Story 15. In line with the 2018 Volcan de Fuego eruption video, that I repeatedly see on my Reddit feed today, I'll pick pyroclastic flows. Simply put, these are clouds of superheated ash, gas, and rock descending the slopes of volcanoes. Their intense heat and sheer force ensure a quick death for those who can't get away quickly enough from their paths. When fully diluted, these flows can even go uphill and cross lakes and seas. And if the horrifying thoughts of having to evade a pyroclastic flow aren't enough for you, try googling lahars as well. 
These are watery slurries that harden like concrete and flow down waterways radiating away from volcanoes and may occur even without a preceding eruption. One such incident in the wake of Nevado del Ruiz's 1985 outburst led to the Armero tragedy in Colombia, leaving 23,000 dead in South America's deadliest volcanic eruption. Story 16. Certainly, one intriguing topic you might consider exploring is the Dyatlov Pass incident. It was a mysterious event that occurred in 1959 in the Ural Mountains of Russia, and it has captured the curiosity of many. This incident involved a group of experienced hikers who embarked on a trek but tragically never returned. When search parties located their campsite, they discovered an eerie scene. The tent was torn from the inside, as if the hikers had urgently fled. Oddly, the hikers were found dead in various locations, wearing inadequate clothing for the harsh weather conditions. What makes this case particularly chilling are the unresolved questions surrounding the incident. The cause of their deaths remains a subject of speculation and debate. Theories range from avalanches and hypothermia to more enigmatic possibilities, such as military involvement, supernatural phenomena, or encounters with yet unknown creatures. Investigating the Dyatlov Pass incident offers a captivating mix of real-life mystery, human intrigue, and the allure of the unexplained. It allows you to delve into the available evidence, examine the different theories, and form your own conclusions about what might have occurred on that fateful night in the Euro Mountains. Story 17. Sunnies trying to hunt and eradicate Shias off the face of the planet for over 1400 years because they want to follow Ali instead of the corrupt political usurpers who overtook his rights like Abu Bakr and Uthman. From the moment the Prophet of Islam died until our current day, ever heard of ISIS, Taliban, any other radical terrorist group? Go research what they were and still are doing. Edit, probably the literal creepiest and most interesting topic you can find on earth and you will understand what's happening in the world a lot better. Story 18. I'm more interested in criminals' train of thought. Why indifference or the mere thought of just because for murder attempted murder? For example, you want me to believe you are nicer than you project and somehow reverse psychology someone into thinking you are the victim instead. These things, I wonder. Second, sunken victims' cars are probably in any water resource you could think of or possibly are swimming in. Third, you may have all read some articles about fentanyl by now. Where is this fentanyl getting distributed from? Who is selling it so discreetly that it ends up in the foods of children and other folks unbeknownst to them? Who else is attached to the network of fentanyl distribution? Are they common folk workers, someone higher up in the economy? Why is this sort of thing being bypassed by inspectors? Are they letting it pass through knowing it's there? I'm going to assume a very small percentage of inspectors will let that slide for who knows what. Story 19, Darknet Diaries by Jack Resider. Hear about ways hackers social engineer companies get access to their networks, and run ransom or steal data user information and sell it off, leak it. Or how system admins bug their female co-worker systems to spy on them and contribute to conversations he's never been a part of. Story 20. The Nazino Affair, aka Cannibal Island. Back in the 30s, some bigwigs in the USSR wanted to do what amounted to a collectivization experiment on an unsettled island so they rounded up 6,000 mostly randomly snatched up city folk and dumped them on an undeveloped island with almost no food or supplies or shelter, with guards stationed around the island ordered to shoot anyone who tried to leave. Within three months, roughly two-thirds of the island's population was dead, with many of the survivors resorting to eating the dead and, in some stories, butchering still living people. Eventually, the experiment was deemed a failure, and they removed the survivors from the island, and records about the experiment were buried until the 1980s story 21, a Redditor, when she was young, and her mom were out camping, and there were men in a truck nearby. Later that night, 
she was awoken by her mom in the tent who was sitting up and motioning for her to be quiet. They could hear the men approaching the tent. The mom had a bit of quick thinking and said, Tommy, grab the gun, aloud, even though it was just the girl and her mom. The men ended up leaving after hearing that. I can't imagine the horrors they avoided that night. Story 22 The true story that was the inspiration for the song The Way by Fastball. It's based on Layla and Raymond Howard, a Texas couple in their 80s. They were planning to go to a festival they went to every year, just 15 miles from their home, but they were both suffering from mental decline. They took off that morning without telling anyone. They never came home. Three days later, they got pulled over 500 miles away from home. Not once, but twice. Neither officer was aware they were reported as missing persons at that time. They were let go with a warning, even though Layla couldn't remember where she lived. The search intensified. Authorities in multiple states were looking for them. It made national news, and tips came rolling in, but none led to their discovery. The early news of the search inspired the song, and it was written before they were found. Layla and Raymond were ultimately discovered by hikers a couple of weeks after their disappearance. The car was at the bottom of a 25-foot cliff. Raymond was deceased in the passenger seat, and Layla was deceased a short distance from the car holding her purse and car keys. She opened the passenger door for her dead husband before crawling away and dying of her own injuries. The car went off the cliff at about 50 miles per hour, and there were no skid marks indicating that she even tried to stop. Presumably, she didn't see the cliff or got confused or something and just drove right off it. Story 23, Cambrian Life at this point in Earth's history, 541 to 485 Maya, most living things look nothing like anything that now exists. There's the Tully Monster, an animal that has paleobiologists in the debate over whether it was a vertebrate or not. It's thought to be related to lampreys. Opabinia, which had five eyes and looks like a cross between a lobster and a vacuum cleaner, and Anomalocaris, basically a chitinous floating death ship that arrived to eat all the much smaller animals of the time. Last, let's not forget Pikaya, a little worm-like thing that is our distant ancestor. New discoveries are made all the time, and scientific theories constantly shift to adjust to the existence of the latest mystery creature. They get neglected by the media in favor of dinosaurs, but Cambrian life is just as fantastic. Story 24. Forensic Farms I donated my body to one after I found out I had cancer, but they will put you in a highly trashed area somewhere where animals could eat you to see how long it takes you to decay or possibly figure out a way criminals might want to dispose of your body, leave you under a mattress or in the open to see how the season affects your body. Of course, this is all in an enclosed forensic farm and its science is doing this to you. Story 25 vigilantism, and how that relates to human behavior and social psychology. I got introduced to it through Black Mirror, a great series. I recommend the episodes The History of Us, Nosedive and White Bear, National Anthem, and 15 Million Merits. It really goes to show how we as humans will do anything to satisfy our inner craving of justice being served. It goes to gray areas as to what morality means, what justice is, and to what extent can humans enforce or even enjoy inflicting pain on others, and how we justify that to ourselves. Story 26. If you're an existentialist, cosmic horror. It's not like a creepy murder or a peculiar event. It's just the idea that we really do live in an infinite, uncaring, apathetic, and amoral universe and we put ourselves on this pedestal of, well, my life matters, and the universe just sorta doesn't care. It's what makes the thing and alien just really creepy, beyond gross bugs from space. Now, let me be clear, this isn't me saying, oh, go read Lovecraft, duh, no, good conduit, but not this comment. Look up some facts about exploration, space, and fundamental concepts like the atom, and life just starts freaking you out. Story 27. I don't know if anyone already said this, but the Eraserhead Baby 
is one hell of a rabbit hole. Anyone who's seen the movie knows how creepy that thing is, but no one really knows what exactly it is. David Lynch is notorious for dodging questions about it and keeping it a mystery in general. Some stories say that the day they were filming with it, Lynch only had the bare minimum staff on site as to keep information about the thing from getting out. There are a whole bunch more stories and theories about it if you're willing to do the digging. Story 28. It had a name which I forgot, but there's an obscure Russian radio station that you can still access with the right antenna and frequency. It plays a repeated beeping, non-stop, 24-7, and it's been active for about 30 years. People have heard Russian music playing in the background and people arguing in Russian, so it's a broadcast of a room audio somewhere. It takes serious high-grade military tech to broadcast a signal this strong for so long. There's a theory that the Soviets created the station for people to tune into during the Cold War, and if the beeping stopped, it meant Russia was compromised, blown up, by nukes. Story 29. I like the simulation theory, the theory that our universe and everything in it is a simulation, nigh on impossible to disprove. Certain events, like why can't we see beyond the Big Bang, etc., may be caused by this theory. The simulation was literally switched on at the Big Bang. One that gets my mind going is the presupposition that the being wants to run the simulation as efficiently as possible. If you were doing that, in a similar way to computer games, you do not render when the player cannot see. So what if whatever is behind you simply does not exist until it is observed? How can you prove it exists as the moment you measure its presence? By looking, measuring an effect given off by it, etc. You are observing. Mind blown.